Hey everybody, this is Ben, and welcome back to the continuation of the Computer Craft Challenge. Uh, I've been getting a lot of requests for this to come back, so here, it is back. Um, I don't know how often I'll be doing the videos, but I will be trying to put a little bit more of my um, focus on getting Computer Craft stuff out. So I wanted to give an update video here on where I'm at. Uh, last time I was showing off my automatic turtle control system, which uh, it controlled the turtles from the server just fine, but there is no automatic to it yet um, but at any rate uh, let's see what do we got here everybody is on but we need to start the system up so this is control server running I should put some kind of message on that but whatever uh, not right now this one is relay easy peasy one hop to server you connected? Yep, good. And then, actually, before I connect those turtles up, let's go ahead and connect the console. This is what I've been working on. Uh, last time, this the console was just uh, straight up text. Uh, and this is kind of my work in progress where I'm at so far. Woo, look at that. It's beautiful. Now, I'm not sure even if what I have is 100% working, but at any rate, it shows that it connected to the central server. Uh, there's one relay in the system, which I had to add to being tracked. And my activity, yeah, my automatic refreshing is still not working. So if I click, you can see the activity monitor updates. I just have a little, like, it's almost like a little binary counter there to represent activity. Kind of allows me to see how quickly, you know, activity is happening. Uh, so then we got a couple of tabs here. We got the system one shows this and turtles, which has nothing so far. I have not gotten that screen going, but the system one, uh, just getting this working has taken me a while. So let's go ahead. You can see it says zero turtles. That's total turtles connected to the system. So if I go ahead and do this and I change this script's name, I think since last time, control client, ping idle, looks good. And turtle, I have to click to refresh at this point. I'll try to fix that during this video. Uh, you can see what I've got at least. So, hold on, let me. Whoop, excuse me. Uh, okay. Uh, so, there we go. Shows one turtle connected. And we'll get the other one. Control client, he's connected. So click to refresh. Yay, two turtles connected. We're good. Um, so yeah, that's that's about where I'm at. Um, all of that took way longer than it should have. But let's go take a peek at that code. And while I'm at it, I'll see if I can get that automatic refresh working again. I have no idea why it's not working. Um, yeah, really, really not sure. So let's uh, pop over to my code. Boop. And this is the control console. Uh, so hopefully you can see this here. Uh, this is quite a long script. We're looking at 342 lines. And most of the GUI, the graphical part of this that I wrote, I actually wrote on a lunch break at work. So it was very, very buggy because I could not run even a computer craft emulator at work. So anywho, we got some basic stuff. Uh, split function, no big deal, splits on a character. I copied that off uh, the computer craft forums. I think that was already in there last time. And let's see here, I've got uh, server connect, very, you know, relay count, turtle count. Those are the things that are just displayed on the screen. Activity blink, this is all for that little activity monitor thing in the corner. <laughs> it's a whole array of true false things that are toggled uh, and in, in a, like a binary counter fashion. So then we've got here the tabs. Uh, get me system tab, turtle tabs, the functions for drawing each of them right there. Um, the curse state, which tells me which function to which draw function to currently call. Uh, this is a tricky little thing I came up with here. This theme array 
gives me title foreground, colors black, title background equals colors orange, and then you have text foreground, text background, good foreground, good background, bad, et cetera, et cetera. And I wanted to have a way to change the color scheme of everything. So I can go ahead and just change one of these colors, like title background, if I said, uh, Yeah, like blue how about I think that's should be valid so then if I come back this lets me change everything in just one spot control console look it's blue fantastic um, and then so I've got this cool little set theme function oops set theme function right here which just takes some text and so I can just call set theme and then whatever the theme is such as title text good etc and it sets that to you know theme you know set text color set background color the whatever foreground whatever background it's it's very handy I use it all over for changing colors it really made things a lot easier so let's orange change that back uh, draw number very simply for loop to draw a specific number of a specific character uh, I don't want to keep having to repeat things uh, draw dialogue. This one's not even used yet. This whole thing, which is probably buggy because I didn't use it or test it, uh, is just to draw like an overlay of a dialogue window on the screen, which I'll use sometime later. Here we go. We'll draw the header. Uh, so we start at the upper corner. We have a for loop. If we go through all the tabs, which is just a list of all the tabs I have currently, and we set the theme to text. See, there's, there we go. We draw a number, four spaces. If this number is the current tab, then we change the theme to title, and that's how you get the kind of like the, the color reverse there. This is not blue. I don't like that blue. Yuck. Let's, here we go. I change back. So you can see how it's got like the black on orange instead of orange on black. It's just kind of title and text are just reversals at this point. So you can see it highlights whichever one I click on, whatever button I click, etc. And so that's all done there. Then we draw that to the screen, then we set the cursor position uh, oh to the next the second line. That's that's to draw this whole just the second line of equal symbols there. No biggie. Uh, draw see this is really I like that. A handy function to have draw a number of characters. The width of the screen, draw equal signs. And that's how we end up with that. Um, and we have the draw activity function that handles drawing our little activity monitor down here in the bottom corner. And draw activity function. Um, and that just, see I should, <laughs> I, have, I have another function to update the activity and it's a lot more messy than this one. I should update that other one. Uh, so it's just alternating between O and zero based upon whether or not this activity blank array element is true or false, blah, blah. Uh, footer, at this point, all this footer is is just basically sets the cursor at the bottom and it draws this line across the bottom of the screen and then calls the function to draw the activity monitor and draw system. Here's the whole first tab. This whole middle of the screen is drawn by this. So the title is system status, and I use a little bit of math here to center it. Uh, set the theme to title, so draw that out. Then we go down here with another title. We draw connections. It's up there. And then I have a little bit of, of uh, logic here for this is the server connect status. If it's failed, then I set the theme to bad, which makes it red. Otherwise, we set the theme to good, which makes it green. I think that should be, I should have that be light green, right? I'll check on that. And then same thing here. This is for relays, number of relays. If there are zero, it gives makes it red just because you should have at least one. I have one and I don't, my system doesn't even do anything. Uh, so then you draw out the relay count and I had to do this weirdness with substrings because of the way Lua handles uh, numbers. Everything is like a float. So when you convert a number to a string, zero comes out, everything comes out as like point, whatever point zero. So that was annoying. I don't, I'm not ever gonna have a part, a portion of a relay or a portion of a turtle connected. 
So I had to do the little math on those. And then Turtles, this is the other tab, the Turtles tab, which is you can see here is very short, just draws the title on the top of the screen, which is why there's nothing on it. I'll try to get to working on that if I can. Uh, this is good old Send Serialized, which forms up the my packet format there. And then here we go, my big message, messy activity tick. I kind of just kept adding on one more and one more and one more until it got to a length that I liked the look of, um, and I settled on that. I don't know. So it's it's very. I can probably boil that down to a loop, and that'll be a lot cleaner. Um, command input also not used yet, but this will. Let's see here. Draw draw a dialog. Look at that. I use it. I call it in this function. Command input. So if I ever get the turtle screen done i can actually call this command input when i want to send a command to a turtle hey there you go that'll that'll come up at some point here handle screen i think that's an old function that i don't need anymore uh force update okay here these are now i'm down to almost the end of this script force update this one is what is supposed to be calling automatic updates every five you can see here five seconds and it does that by simply sending a packet to the server saying hey send a console update and then it ends and then I have the other function which actually does all of the work here handle events which does a lot well it does a bit more than just handle events it also does all of my screen drawing here we clear it we draw the header we draw whatever the current page is, and we draw the footer. So header and footer are always the same. Current state draws the middle of the screen. And so I went through many, many iterations of this handling events, trying to debug this thing, and finally settled on this, which got me to both use rednet events and mouse click events kind of together in the same way that I wanted to if that makes sense. So we get the event array here from this OS pull event. We just make that all and go into one array. So if the first element, the type, the event type is a mouse click, then we do some click handling here, which I've got all this little funky math figured out based upon the width of the tabs and whatnot to just, it can easily mathematically figure out which tab I clicked on. So like I can click right there, that's actually part of the tab. So I can click all over all over between here, the T starts the tab, and there's also a space. All my all of my tabs are eight characters long. Um, I decided on that fairly arbitrarily, but it it makes for you know set set up some numbers and then click on that one. We go back, uh, set up some uh, you know strict numbers on the size of my tabs so I can have easy math to switch between tabs. This will work no matter how many tabs I add until they overflow off the side of the screen. So after it decides what tab you've clicked with here by saying if you click on the first row, then you're clicking on one of the tabs, or you know something that's not a tab. Then if your tab, uh, every you know 12 characters is a gap, and then a tab. So as long as you clicked on something that is, uh, let's see. It does a modulus function here, so it's 12, so it's greater than 4. So that counts like, okay, so there's 1, 2, 3, 4. If you clicked in any of these first four, that's then less than or equal to 4. If it's greater than 4, then you clicked in somewhere in the next 8. Then you divide by 12, and you get back to 0 remainder. So then you get 1, 2, 3, 4, all here. And then the next one starts at the fifth character of this section, you know, and so on. If that, if that makes sense... Um, and then we just set the current tab to, you know, whatever that is divided by 12 math ceiling. Yes, because if it's divides by 12 and you get like 0.5, then it's the first tab. So I want that ceiling, of course. And then you set the current state to whatever the draw function is for the new current tab, which has just been set here. So that, that's how the switching tabs works. It's really quite simple once you understand the math that determines where the person is clicked. Other than that, I just have these, this uh, career tab is just a 
integer, but it's just a number, and the draw tab just is an array which holds a reference to the functions for the draw to the draw functions for each of the tabs. Mm -hmm. So that holds a reference to you know the where did that go to the turtle? Well, whatever. I think you no oh, excuse me saw it up at the top. There's the draw status and draw turtle or draw sorry draw system draw turtle, and then we force an update. And I pass a true. This force update is the little function here. I pass true for immediate. So if immediate is not equal to, to true, if it's anything else, including no. Huh. I wonder if that actually isn't the. If there's there's no nothing in there, if it's nil. Because if it's not true, even if it's nil, it should still then OS sleep for five seconds. But I say true immediate, so it's then this is true it skips that and immediately forces an update. And then modem message, I had to rewrite this using the modem message event instead of the rednet message event, which meant that I got to include side and channel here among the variables that I'm actually not using. But once I figured that out, I figured out why my using this OS iPol every event it, there is no rednet message event that comes through when you use it this way. So let me turn my rain off. That's some loud snow, man. So I have cheats on, so this is toggled downfall. Thank you. That will be your downfall. All right, let's get back to my code. So this is just the same old kind of like rednet, or in this case, modem message. This is, it's still kind of, it's still like rednet. Uh, rednet event or message handling based upon my specialized little packet protocol. So we've got all of our typical stuff. And then except for here, I added at the bottom, we've got the update stuff if the message coming back for about an update is the relay count, then we set the relay count. Oh wait, I thought I... Huh. I thought I edited, I changed this from using this old hacky method of concatenating it with an empty string to make sure it's a string. Well, you know what, it's working. I guess I'm not gonna touch it. <laughs> At any rate, wow, it takes forever to go through this code. So I'm gonna have to record another episode like immediately. So let's just finish this up real quick. I'm almost at the end of the script. Main, this is where the program really begins. And you know what, I think I duplicated a bunch of this stuff. Something, you know what, something happened somewhere. Yeah, see, I've got this stuff at the top too. Something happened in my, when I was debugging, I think. That I got. Anyway, you can see here all tabs named are system turbo. Draw tab has references to the draw functions for each. But all that stuff is contained up at the top of the script. I don't know why. So, like I said, somewhere my undos got screwed up. I mean, this is really what I. Okay. To string. It's a little bit more readable. There we go. All right, so then we come down here. This is the main function. I think there's something going on where force update here on my parallel, wait for any call. This, like this line is not getting here. I don't know if parent ID, parent ID is not, ha. Huh. I'm gonna have to draw that to the screen, I think. So we'll do that debugging of that next time. So thanks everybody for watching. Uh, I hope I didn't really explain this stuff, I guess. But uh, anyway, thanks everybody for watching. Uh, I will continue, uh, like I say, next time. We'll go try to get this thing actually working correctly, work on that turtle screen. And so thanks everybody for watching and I'll see you next time.